Hello, hello, welcome to Manor Lords. This game is coming out April 26th. However, I got my hands on it early as a member of the press. And this is a city builder strategy game. Uh, if you didn't know this about me, you might know that I'm a card player, but what you might not know is that I am mostly interested in games for logistics reasons. Like, logistics is my jam. Hearthstone had a lot of logistics, but city builders, those have a lot of logistics. Strategy games in general have logistics, so let's check out this Manor Lords game, shall we? Uh, new game, you get to choose whichever guy you think represents me the best. That one goes pretty good. You get to create a coat of arms. I happen to like gold and purple very well. That was the coat of arms I created. But let's change it up a little bit. Holy cow, that's so many. Uh, let's go for this one. Background the gold and a little bit of white symbol. We'll go with the tower. Purple tower. Two, four, five towers. Cool. So, uh, early access, by the way, uh, is what it'll be, April 26th. Uh, this is a game that's been pretty widely anticipated for a new city builder strategy setup. Uh, right now, what I've got are three scenario templates. There is the basic rule a town with no combat type, where you're trying to get to the end. There's the 1v1 against an AI, and there's this one, which I haven't tried yet. Uh, apparently it's a survive while growing your city type of game. Given that the default option that they have selected is the middle one, I will choose the default default. Restoring the peace. I think this gives a pretty good look at the gameplay from a sense of ruling a city as well as potential conflicts against other players. So the end goal is domination, taking out the uh, all the opponents, which in this case is one opponent. Begin. Uh, other games in this genre include probably most memorable Banished. Had to try Banished again shortly after trying this out just to see the differences. I can immediately see I'm playing this on Ultra, and Ultra does make the game look very, very pretty. Uh, I do have the tutorial going on. I should just skip the tutorial since I've played through it. Let me pause uh, as I talk about stuff. We got a new message as we come in. The victory condition is dominance. Okay. So the goal is to take out your opponent. Your opponent starts off with two regions. You start with one. There's a number of regions on the map. Uh, you might want to go after your opponent first. You might want to go after the neutral regions first. In the default setting, the opponent's going to go after the neutral regions first. So you're not going to fight immediately. Um, all of these regions, one of the cool aspects is that they all have a different specialty. And you can see the the specialization, so to say. You can see what a region is specialized in uh, through the little crown thing. So it seems like this region that I'm starting with is especially good at wild animals. And surprisingly, there's only one good specialization. I wonder if that means this particular area is good for farming. Uh, so if I look at the overlays, oh, this is really interesting. I didn't even know that was possible in the starting region. Uh, the fertility of this region is really high which is probably because it only has one specialty in it, which is wild animals. That's the only rich deposit here. Every other deposit is meh. But uh, it being a very fertile region is definitely a pretty different outcome. Uh, so we're going to be eating good here. 
Uh, you start the game off with a meager five guys and a small supply of things, and you're trying to build a thriving city out of it. I mean, the ultimate goal is to conquer your opponent, but to do that, you're going to have to build a pretty cool city. Uh, now, in order to build a city, you're going to need timber. Timber is really important. So, you start off building a logging camp. Uh, want to build this near my initial setup, just because of logistics. You don't want to drag things too far away. So, I'll build my logging camp right in the middle of the forest here. I used to, like, I started off building it off the side here and then chopped in, but then I realized it chops all around. So, you know, building it right in the middle of the forest seems like a good idea. Uh, the normal speed that this is in is more like a cinematic speed if I just uh, were to play it in normal speed. It's uh, a lot like as if this was on pause, practically. Uh, so I will be running it most of the time at fast forward x4, which I would consider as actual normal speed. You can see the little ox there is transporting the lumber. Uh, one of the mechanics of this game is that the only things that can move these very heavy and very important timber items are the oxen. Uh, so you only begin with one ox. So the other four people right now are just uh, mainly doing nothing, but these guys are helping build this by flattening ground, which probably means clearing the one tree there and making sure it's a buildable area. Uh, each the, the timber is going to be delivered here. You can see that two timber is required, but you also do need to put in some building effort. Uh, so other things I'm going to need on top of just gathering timber, and timber is the most important early. Uh, I'll want a food supply. So I will set up a forager hut near these berries. Create a road over to the main hub here. The game is very freeform in the sense that uh, nothing you build is going to be like a perfect square or whatnot. You get a lot of control over your design. Uh, so do I want to build the road like this? Do I want to build it like this? Uh, whatever is good. Let's see, there should be another source of food here as well, the wild animals, which is the rich deposit. I will set this up as well. One of the things that I realized in across like my first few runs is that you can uh, have your... I mean, the region... It's fine to like just build directly across, essentially. Like this might seem a little bit far away from home base, so to say, but it's fine. Uh, speaking of home base, I'm going to get another oxen up really quickly. As the logistics uh, man here, I know it's really important to get multiple oxen uh, to haul multiple timber. Uh, now, whenever the oxen is pulling a timber, it needs a person to guide the ox as well. So, uh, the number of people I haven't assigned is the number I began with of five people. So, always gotta have basically the number of unassigned people equal to oxen so that they can move these lumber, uh, these timber. Most of the buildings require timber. So, got my food source up, I got this up. What's important next is getting the approval rating up, uh, which is going to cause population growth. And in order to have population growth, I need to have, um, I need to have enough residences for these population. Looking at where the water is, on where I can build wells, uh, looks like here, and again, the place that I can farm is everywhere on this particular region, which is rare. You can, like, look at all the other regions. Uh, there's usually a larger variety of fertility, but this is some good farmland. 
logging camp finished, I'm going to assign two of my guys there uh, because getting this timber early is going to be really important to set up the whole town. Practically every building requires timber. Uh, and again, the only way you're going to move this timber is by having oxen. So I'm going to set the construction priority on this hitching post high. And I'm going to order another ox with my 50 starting regional wealth. I'll use 20 of it on another ox. And let me build my first little burgage plot as well. This is the place that families live. Uh, I remember the waters around here, so I will just set up one small region here. And you can see it's very freeform in how you build it, but essentially you want this in the shape of a rectangle. Uh, if you build the plot large enough, on top of that bottom area where you can see the shaded little place for a house, you can have a little bonus area for extra work, a shed. Uh, I think that tends to be very useful, so you'll usually build one with a shed. I am setting up specifically this one plot early so that I can start getting the uh, utility from the shed early. There's a lot of different ways you can customize the plots. New message. Uh, that is the opponent who has said that <laughs> I just want to live here with you. Excuse me. You have no rightful claim here. So, in this early part, I'm going to pretty much have my... Of the five guys, I'm going to have two on this logging camp producing uh, timber for just a little bit until I get enough timber. One of the guys will be gathering the berries here. You'll notice that this says 38 out of 64 seasonal growing. Uh, every year, there will be 64... There will be up to 64 food here. And during certain seasons, that berry bush will grow or will... Uh, disappear. So there's a bit of seasonality going on. I can see, I'm holding down tab so you can see all the buildings and what people are doing here. Uh, you can see the oxen moving and Generally, when the oxen are moving, that's when you know your town's doing stuff. If the oxen are just sitting near the hitching post, then you could be more efficient. So, on this burgage plot, uh, you can see these are the requirements for them to go to the next level. They need access to water, they need a church, they need fuel, they need food, ideally two different types of food, and they need clothing. And you can construct a backyard extension, uh, of which I'm going to start off with chicken coop. That's uh, 25 of my early game regional wealth into the chicken coop, 20 into the ox. The chicken coop provides uh, passive eggs, which is a food source. And it's a unique food source, different from the berries, which means that the people will become happier and will give me approval because they'll have two different sources of food. Uh, I'll fix this homelessness problem, and then this approval rating will go above 50%, which will allow the population to increase. So that's the early game where you want the population to increase. So let me build this thing out. In order to have a population increase, I have to both have no homelessness as well as extra room for more guys. So I'm going to try to create an extra, uh, I want to build enough people to, I want to build enough so that like, uh, there's six new houses. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, you'll notice that all of them have room for a backyard. That's the top side. Some of them off to the side have that little plus, which means I've made the plot big enough that you can fit an extra like sub house in it. 
which is totally good. You can see that as I built that, the timber went down here, but the timber is not really gone. This is currently showing surplus goods. This is the amount of timber I actually have, but this is the... Uh, after I spend all that timber, this will how much I'll actually have. So, good display. So the early part, uh, early way to get approval is going to be the diversity of food, which is going to be my berries as well as getting this hunting camp going. Since I have set up the early housing there, I'm also going to get the saw pit to turn the lumber into planks. I'll need planks as a building material. Uh, I'm mainly going for the church here next. Having a church turns out to be very good for your approval. So that's the thing that I'm going to be building towards. So to get that, I need 20 planks. Each of these uh, buildings has a bit of fine-tuning. Here, I don't know the exact numbers on what the hunting limit is, but uh, the default hunting limit is 10. When the population of a herd drops this number, workers stop hunting, presumably so that the animals can, you know, grow and repopulate the area. I'm going to set it to 20. I find that they tend to grow faster, but that could just be of very limited data when there's more of them. Uh, we're getting to the summer seasons soon. Uh, well, right now we're in the spring season, so there's frequent raining. The rain is damaging the supplies. Uh, after another rain, some of them may get destroyed. So it'll be important to, at one point or another, to store them in a stockpile. A storehouse, rather. So that they aren't just a stockpile. And similarly, the food is going to want to go into the granary instead of out in the open. You can see that each of these burgage plots took two timber to build, so since the only things that can carry timber are these oxen, uh, having two oxen around uh, helps move the timber a lot faster. And I have two assigned people to steer those oxen. So yeah, the uh, people are getting housed. Very good. the saw pit is important, so I'm going to up the construction priority. Uh, the buildings tend to go in terms of what order they were built in. You can see that these six were built in that order, and then I put the saw pit, and then I built the uh, storehouse and then the granary. they will jump the saw pit uh, in front of these guys. Because these houses don't actually have any impact until my approval goes above 50%. At which case, in which, at which point it'll be really important to have the six house. So I can actually get the six family. Uh, also, worth noting, as I said, the game begins you with five guys, but it's five families. Each family has three people in it, which I think is a nice way to make it so that you micromanage three times less, so to say, because when you're assigning things, you're basically assigning the whole family towards that goal. So you're assigning, like, sets of three at a time. Alright, let's put it in fast forward. Things are getting set up. Got my saw pit.
put one of my uh, oxen people onto the saw pit so I can start making that planks so I can start making that church. Uh, in this storehouse and this granary, uh, they perform a lot better when they're actually manned, but we lack the manpower at the moment. And as these warnings see, uh, as these warnings say, as it did previously say, uh, this forger hut only holds 50 berries, so after the 50 berries is exceeded, it stops working, which is why the greenery is helpful here. Okay, so with five, I paused it, with five houses built, uh, I have managed to make it to a small village. Each region has its own... Here, let's rename the town while I'm here. Rename the region. My starting region is going to be called Value Town, as I am the mayor of Value Town. Uh, we get to see what is the specialty of this town. You can kind of specialize all of your regions. Uh, as I looked at the beginning, this is clearly a farming town. So I think the upgrades of Heavy Plow, which enables oxen at the farmhouse for significantly faster plowing of large fields. Uh, this will be a critical, like I should focus it all on these types of developments. Uh, note that some are currently locked because early access. So I'll probably be picking Heavy Plow. I'll pick it in a bit. No need to right now. Actually, what if I picked Orchardry? Produces apples. Apples harvest happens around September every year until the trees are fully grown, which takes around three years. The orchards produce only a fraction of the yield. Nah, I probably don't have the money for that. Okay, and with building the storage, the strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. A shipment of weapons just arrived. Cool. Uh, with these militia, you can clear out the bandits on the map, uh, which will give you prestige. Influence, rather. And we'll also stop those filthy bandits from robbing you. Uh, after I get more population, I will send a few troops out to deal with the bandit. So I am just waiting to get 20 planks here. Letting this happy little ox visit the logging camp to bring the timber over to the saw pit so the saw pit can saw that thing. Note that two of my guys are actually uh, directing the oxen right now. I believe that is because the saw pit person uh, has noted that they can't do anything. So, well, one of the people who was idling around. Uh, managed to go grab that ox and lead it to deliver the log. So the people don't strictly just, you know, they don't just sit around. They sometimes step in and be useful things. Uh, the warning just flashed that I was missing one of the resources. You do also need firewood. So let me get that going. got my 20 planks. After building this church, I actually won't need uh, planks for some time. So, just building a quick 20 plank, get in my church, and yeah.
once I get that church up, the approval will go above 50 and people will start moving in. And I imagine this is the early way that the early standard build uh, should look something like this, where you're trying to get the church early so that church is surprisingly important so that you can get your approval rating up. Uh, so that you can actually get people moving in. Uh, this is the early game bottleneck. The bottleneck being getting 50% plus approval. Uh, so, the early part would be getting together your housing so that there's no homelessness, getting together multiple sources of food so that people are more satisfied, and getting your church up so that there's approval rating. Oh, look, those bandits have stolen my berries. Pesky bandits. Okay, and with the creation of the church, I will now expect uh, the population to grow. Uh, in order to actually feed these people, I do need to also get my marketplace up. The marketplace is where everyone distributes their goods. Let me set it up next to the church. Let me get the well up as well. Okay, so well, marketplace... This is the basic necessities. Honestly, that is really large for a marketplace, but why not? I could fit in another house here, but... No need to be that specific in setting things up. Uh, with the building of these burgage plots, the first two building, uh, the first two clicks that you do represent where they're facing. So I'm building the outer side here first, and then I'll check to see if this space is good enough so that they have a storage. They do. That might be giving it a little bit too much space, so let me take it back one peg. That is still good. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's building a lot of buildings at a single time, but this spaces them out nicely, so all right. We'll just have that set up. Happy little village block. Uh, every so often, mercenary companies become available. Uh, these are temporary guys that you can hire for treasury cost. Treasury is a little bit more bigger picture, where you get your treasury by taxing your regions. So, currently we're not at that global stage, we're more focused on the regional. Uh, the regional wealth is basically how much money your region can use, and that'll differ depending on which region you're in. Uh, they all will have their independent regional wealth. We just 
went into 51% approval rating. That's from the church level and from the market food variety. So people are going to start moving in. And when you have only five families, uh, the extent of what you can do is very limited. Come on, laddie. Come on. So we've got low population growth off of uh, slightly above 50% approval rating. But the approval rating will continue to go up as the church stays around longer and as uh, I get the food in, as well as satisfy these requests in general. So water access check, church level check, the fuel, I've set up this, so check soon, food, so food stall check, clothing stall. So what I'm just missing now is a source of clothing, and this hunting cab camp that I've had uh, produces hides. The hides can be crafted into clothing with leather. One common adage in these uh, strategy games is to keep your resources as low as possible. You're running a lean, mean machine here. So that is constantly the goal, to have as little excess as possible. To have those crafting materials constantly be used on the stuff that they want to be used on. Uh, that's how we can expand this city and grow stronger the fastest. So we had our sixth family move in, uh, which gives me another guy to assign. Uh, that person will be assigned to the tannery so that I can start fulfilling all these requirements, which means I can upgrade these to level two. At level two, these plots will start generating one regional wealth per family per month, as well as allowing them to perhaps specialize into pretty unique things. What are these unique things they could specialize in? Well, I had built the chicken coop here, but what else could you build instead? You can make these blacksmiths, you can make them cobblers, they can be boyers, uh, they can be joiners, and I am going to need a joiner and a blacksmith in order to build more uh, army materials. An army eventually needed for the big showdown against the enemy, Hildebolt von Barunit, as well as clearing out these bandit camps. As well as uh, fulfilling the next element level. Next element level is I have two Burgage plots at level two or higher. So I got a bunch of houses ready for these. Uh, ready for the new families to move in. A new family started moving in. So this early flow of families is critical, since right now we really could use a lot of, a lot more people. Uh, pressing tab here, I started noticing that I can upgrade to level 2. Looks like these families were the first to get a hold of the new tannery uh, leather pieces of clothing that I started making. So let's just go ahead and upgrade these to level 2. Uh, requiring four timber apiece, this is quite the logistics of oxen. We're going to go over here, drag the timber all the way over there. Four trips here, here, and back. You can see how important oxen are. Come on, come along. Let's see. I think. The next step is going to be, can I get this done? Let's see, September to November is harvesting, plowing, and sowing crops, plowing. Um, this is a very farm-heavy region. I haven't tried to set up farming 
this early, but given that I'm the farming region, I think I will give this a shot. So, the early recommendation is to set up, it's called one, what is the unit? One Morgan field. I don't know for certain whether or not that's a good size, but it's the size that the tutorial suggests, so it's the size that I'll go with for now. Uh, it's quite a smaller farm than I had. Is this this little no nope, four by four perhaps? Nah, yeah, good enough. A happy little one by one point four Morgan farm. Value Town is now a medium village. To get to the next, I'll need uh, five Burgage plots level two or higher. I think I can get that pretty fast. Sure, why not just go for it now? I figure getting the regional wealth flow in early might be good. More important is to spend the timber on making sure I have uh, more population, more housing, but it looks like I have plenty of housing for now. I'll sign two guys to the woodcutter's lodge. Looks like I'm a little uh, low on fuel. Next thing I'm gonna want to build is another more more logging camps. We need more timber. Faster and faster we grow, and to grow more timber we need. Okay, well, with three perks, because I grew so fast, I've never actually grown the opening city that fast, so let me think about what I want. New upgrade apple orchard. Hmm. Tempting. So you got uh, stuff that upgrades farms, stuff that upgrades like general gathering stuff. So 
stuff that's good at metallurgy and mining, and stuff that's generally trade-related. And there's a limited section right now in early access, so I knew I was going to go for this stuff. go ahead and pick Orchardry, which means I could have picked that way earlier. And then the other two... I'll take the Wow and probably Sheep Breeding. The Orchardry will allow me to start growing in the backyard. 50 wealth, though. That's quite a lot of wealth, so it'll be a while before I actually use any of those extensions anyways. I also... Oh, no, no policy yet. Uh, one of the warnings is generic storage full. Excess goods need to be moved to a storehouse, otherwise workers may stop production. Uh, my, my little town has grown enough that I think we can have one person man the storehouse now. That'll make it so that there's more logistics between people well, behind the storehouse going out and gathering the people's stuff rather than just having these buildings uh, take time to deliver to the storehouse. Looks like it's a little bit late to get to the farmhouse, so I'm not going to. So I got this farmhouse set up a little bit too early. Uh, it's actually a lot earlier than I usually set it up because I usually set it up post winter. But I just wanted to try for it this time, but looks like it was too soon. Not going to be able to actually use that in time. Uh, as we have winter swoop in. And you can kind of see that people have started filling in these houses, so I only have four empty houses. I'm going to make sure that I keep building this up so that the population keeps growing. A little bit more room to get all these guys the backyard. Okay, looks like I have my recruits available. Uh, get my 20 in place, and then I can go hunt down those bandits. Uh, let's do it. So, zooming out a little here, you can see some bandits. They've been robbing me. So we dispatch out this uh, Spear Militia, 20 of them, because uh, the game on default difficulty gives you that 20 free shields and spears uh, as soon as you build the storehouse. On a higher difficulty, you won't even get that. And I guess... We'll slow it down to what I like to call cinematic speed. They call it normal speed, but surely no one would play at this speed, right? Let's see, where's my militia at? Oh no, my militia have gotten buried under some uh, trees. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yes, sire. Yes, sire. There's actually a little bit of fog of war going on as well, where the brigands. Oh, they're here! I see the little display is just a little off center here. So, cinematic speed. Uh, you notice that the brigands actually disappeared off the map. Uh, for a little bit. That's because 
there's a little bit of fog of war going on when they hide in the trees and whatnot. Uh, the brigands are not as powerful as your default troops. You can press tab and see the their values. They only have attack one, armor three, shield one, charge three. My guys have attack one, armor five, shield eight, impaling ten. Whatever that means. And you can kind of see like the reasons why they're winning or not. Oh yeah, they're going at it. Defeated the bandits, now we get to loot their camp. When I loot the camp, there's going to be two options on do I want it for my personal treasury or do I want to send it to help out my region? And I think, surely early game, uh, the best option would be send the resources to the nearest town. Uh, that gets me regional wealth, so I can use that regional wealth to boost up my stuff. I'm going to look around to see if there's any other bandits out there. There's one up there. Let's go chase after it. Uh, because I get influence, which is very useful. So with the 126 regional wealth, I am going to start building out more backyard extensions. Uh, let's get some more chickens out here. So you can kind of see all these... All these little houses can be specialized. And I think in the early game, just having more sources of food has got to be good. Uh, I think getting these apple orange shirts out early is also really good, as well as these vegetable gardens. But I got a little trick I'm gonna pull here. And I'm also gonna get myself some extra hitching posts. Get more oxen. Let me set these to be high priority to be built. And start calling in more oxen. Alright, so we got plenty of food, plenty of fuel, and as soon as I get this uh, high food economy up, I'll feel really good, I imagine. This is a different start than I've done because of the high fertility. Certainly don't expect this good of fertility in your starting region. This is a bit of a different scenario. But with all this fertility, I feel comfortable that I'll be able to put anyone to work. So therefore, the faster I grow, and I think I can support them easily by having them all be farmers. So the idea I've got here is I'm going to build a ton of... I'll get a ton of guys, and at worst, those guys can be put to farming. And let me, before I forget, grab that heavy plow. Enables employing oxen at the farmhouse for significantly faster plowing of large fields. So, gonna be getting a lot of oxen and a lot of farming, I would imagine. Get these... Uh, posts near the farms, I suppose.
So clearing out that first uh, bandit camp got me 320 influence. At 1,000 influence, I can lay a claim on another piece of land. So that's roughly three bandit camps. If you want some bonus micro uh, during the winter time, you can hear the guy from the forger hut because the berry deposit is going away. Although, uh, interestingly enough, uh, this berry deposit still had a few berries in it, so I actually perfectly microed that. I gained my 320 influence. Let's loot the camp, bring the uh, value back to the region. And bring these guys home. Peacekeeping duties complete. Got five guys to assign. February. Soon it shall be spring. Guess I will reassign these guys to the farmhouse. I had been mentioning a trick. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some very large houses. Very large burgage plots. <laughs> I've never actually tried this big yet, but I don't see any reason why I can't. Here, let's, let's do a little bit of sideways building. Okay, so I'm looking to do thin, tall, something like this. Oh wait, I want the entrance to be here. And then we diagonally set it up very wide like this. So you may ask, why are we setting up <laughs> such an odd arrangement? And the answer is... I'll show you in a little bit. Right, but let me get more ox. You can only uh, order an ox every 30 days from the trader. We can get our variety of food up much faster. I've never built the burgage plot quite this uh, long thin yet. I also never get the apple orchard uh, early, but theme is good flavor. So apple orchard. How? Wait. Nice work. Nice work. Does the apple orchard actually benefit from more room? Uh, it seems like it doesn't. But the carrots! The carrots do. That's the important part. The vegetable garden. Look at that. It's a huge garden. I will feel a little bit silly if the apple orchard does not actually uh, grow out trees throughout this entire plot. But only a little silly. Because it was done in the name of science. And we will, uh, in the meantime, use this previously built diagonal as a foundation for the other two vegetable gardens that I plan on having here.
So I ended up losing three guys. Um, oh, new bandit camp. Get in there. Reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Shall we track their steps? Yes. That is the role-playing way of saying that the bandits will start attacking me in year three. But I've uh, taken a much more proactive stance and I'm starting to attack them. Uh, early year one. Vegetable garden... Vegetable garden. If I look at this and I figure out that the little orchard is not actually influenced by size, I might just have a little uh, a little plot here. Let's try a small orchard here. See what the difference is. I can't really tell unless that apple orchard apart. Uh, might be more apparent later. Oh, also, this one happened to have zero guys, but it'll have a guy in soon. Well, yes, it's spring. Let's get some wheat going. I'm a little late on the plowing. And sowing. So I might have to make use of that early harvest action this year. Perhaps. We'll see. Alright, I'm actually much faster than expected, nearly up to the place where I can start a new region, so let me get some actual treasury money. I'm at 104 treasury, I'll need 250 in order to start a new town. Uh, in order to start a new town, I'm also going to need some more basic supplies, so we're talking stone... Well, it's we're talking. In order to get out there, I'll need this manor, which is stone and timber again. Or is timber the right word? Planks. Which still needs way more people. Oh! Is that a tree I see planted hey, every so often? Again. Or is that just my imagination? I think the window should go over there. I haven't even talked about crop rotation, right? So. Game's got a bunch of detail. Uh, in traditional times, you didn't simply repeatedly grow the same crop over the same plantation. You had to rotate those crops, let them sit sometimes, otherwise their fertility would get too low. So even in this high fertility region, I might want to do wheat and then fallow and then wheat, or perhaps I actually do crop rotation just rotate between the three, because the default uh, fertility is very, very high. Anyways, they are 
plowing, soon they will be sowing, sowing, uh, and then it looks like June to August is the crop growing season, which means I'll be in time. I'll even get this set up ahead of time. We'll just have those be sitting there for some time, but maybe next year we'll have the personnel to man all those fields. Oh no! These plots are the ones that are... ...being moved into the last. So, a little bit of lull order. Need to have the guys move in first before... Uh, ...having those be the... So that some people could actually grow these gardens. Anyways, uh, definitely spend down this money, so I'll just buy a bunch of chicken coops. Right, I can have two people in the hunting camp, since we actually have a rich wild animal deposit. And it's probably time to start mining this very limited amount of iron that I have. bandits around, right? Okay. Yeah. Probably too soon to have these guys. Since I don't have very much uh, iron in this place, I'm going to be thinking about how can I build an army without much iron, and probably the answer is going to be archers, uh, since the bows do not take iron. next thing I'm planning to build is the namesake of the game, the manor. Uh, with the manor I can start setting up taxes so I can start uh, getting out to settle a new region.
gonna be efficient and clear out these trees and then uh, farm that land afterwards. Ah, are those the beginnings of trees that I see? Well, it looks like this place is, uh, having the trees be tended to, even though no one lives here. Uh, where do I feel like living? How about out here in the countryside? Actually, I think that would be cool, but a lot of resources might go into the manor, and uh, I probably should have it near my supply, so I'll build it out here on the, you know, right against the opponent, I guess. And this is where you can build a massive castle, potentially, with walls and gates, outer towers. But for now, we're just going to set up a basic mansion. This is a very small stone deposit, so I'll let the guy finish mining the 12, and then uh, we'll just start carrying this stone over to the storehouse here. Quick tip is uh, looking at the oxen can tell you whether or not things are idle. If the oxen are chilling, that means you got stuff that you can be doing. So these the uh, oxen heavy requirement of like lumber over at these upgrades. Whenever I notice that the oxen are just sitting still doing nothing. I'm actually keeping pretty low on my timber, so that's good. Means I can get more guys out on timber. It might be worth noting that, uh, there is this building that allows you to regrow the trees, but it is more efficient to simply chop down what is already here. And I'll worry about regrowing them later. Uh, looks like we've almost filled out all the houses, so let's keep this city growing. I just remembered I put that church in the uh, marketplace here because I was uh, planning to expand the city this way. But we can do it this way as well. In a bit.
Bandits. I'll need to loot that bandit camp. And we need to start some taxes. Uh, taxes make the people less happy. But I need them in order to grow the treasury. First little harvest is successful. Let's see, it looks like this is my best barley field. Grow some barley for next season. Grow some flax for next season. This will be wheat. Or rather, I guess that's fallow and then wheat. Let's see, that's the opponent's army. They were on the way to clear out the bandits, but I got here first. Okay, I've got enough to claim a new region. This first region was very light on iron, uh, so I may want a region that is strong at iron. Uh, looks like none of the nearby regions are strong at iron. We got a strong berry deposit and a strong wild animals. This one's nice and center as well. I'll take the central. One might ask, won't the enemy uh, move in with his soldiers while I'm claiming this? Uh, they're not designed to basically fight you at this setting, the default setting, uh, until all of the neutral regions have been cleared. Which is good, because... Uh, and that was a lot of troops, wasn't it? Wow, this is quite the route. To get the level 2 up to level 3, which is what I'm going to aim to do next year, uh, they need access to a tavern, they need the church to be upgraded, and they need another source of clothing. So I'm on the tavern by getting myself the barley. The barley is processed into malt and then into ale, the flax, 
The flax can be woven into linen, which is another source of clothing. Uh, this field is lying fallow this year, so that next year the wheat harvest will be better. Or perhaps I um, rotate it so that it goes flax and then wheat. We'll see. But okay. You might say, okay, so standard stuff, you know, get the region's economy up. But where it starts to get pretty wild is each region is kind of its own little place. So now that I own this region, I can send in a settler's camp here. Uh, I believe this will be the central area since it's next to the food and trees and the wildlife here. I'll set it up over here-ish. I shouldn't send it in yet right now though. I actually made this mistake earlier. Uh, very dangerous to send in a new expedition right on the verge of winter. Uh, winter is pretty harsh, so I'll wait until winter is nearly done, and then I'll send in the uh, new settlers over here. And then we will begin building another town. Employing oxen at the farmhouse. Add a plowing station. Wow. Well, actually, I have to make that upgrade first. That's pretty high priority. looks like a lot of fields, so hopefully we can get it done. Cow go! Fox.
So I can do a policy. There's uh, limited policies now with the early access. Uh, the two options are wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50% reduced yield from crops, which is certainly not what I'm going to do on this one. This one's strict fasting. Doesn't skip every fifth meal, reduces food consumption, decreases approval. I don't think I want that yet. Well, we're still in a uh, fast growth mode. But, ooh, it, on the other hand, it does look like the orchard is doing really well. Uh, as this one house has a lot of apples in production, similar to how these guys have a bunch of veggies. setup going and it looks like these guys are nearly done shopping I'm gonna just keep building logging camps instead of trying to regrow the forest yet because it is what do they call it free real estate right now this guy off of uh, foraging in the winter. Not enough supplies. We're low on fuel. And I'll start to get my more sustainable supply of wood. Going with my first foresters out of here. Could also uh, micro the eight guys off of the farmhouse during winter, but one of the small nice things, as you can see from the lines, they're still doing a small amount of useful stuff while not actually doing anything. Some of the members of the family are being useful. If I wanted to min-max a bit more uh, during the winter, I turn those guys off. Which is exactly what I want to do, right? We're still growing fast. We need all the guys we can get. Okay, let me get my first artisan out. Level 2? Uh, 
We have a lot of... We don't have a lot of iron, so let's make some more bows. Speaking of iron, did I get this set up? Yep, we're mining. There's not that much iron in here. The stone has been mined out. And it's just about the end of February. As soon as it changes to March, I'm going to begin the expansion to the next region. forgot about that raider attack. The little timer has been ticking down this whole time, of course. So, uh, let's talk about Redney. These are a really strong type of unit, uh, which you can only get through treasury money. Seems like a good time to buy a few. Um... They cost 50 gold a piece, which is a lot. Or I could hire some mercenaries. Local thugs. Wayward sons. Local thugs. A small pack of local misfits and troublemakers. 15 bucks? Alright. You're hired. Local thugs. What? They're coming in from all the way up there? You gotta hustle. Anyways, that's a little bandit attack. About to burn some people. Did I get any bows up yet, by chance? Two bows. Cool. I'm not gonna lie, uh, Brigand, so it's a very inconvenient place for you to be. Mission completed raiders near. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't get enough warning. Oh no. doing so well. 
That bandit camp had the spawn. Wait, did they actually disappear? No, surely they're just, like, hidden in these trees. Surely? Maybe me hiring them scared them off. Maybe I hired the bandits. Well, I'll be. It appears that they actually just got bored and left. Maybe they got scared off. Maybe it's because I hired these brigands. Who knows? But okay. Mercenaries, you gotta pay them every uh, 30 days, so. Looks like if there's nothing further to do, Mr. Briggins, hiring you was probably an excellent move. I don't know if it's what uh, got these guys away. But I'm sure I would have been fine. There, there would have been a little fire, and that would have been exciting to see, but I'd have been fine. So there was this cool upgrade. Bakeries produces bread from flour with twice the efficiency of the communal oven. Alright. Let's get a bakery extension. Oh no, I forgot to... One, I forgot to move my guys. One, I forgot to settle these new lands. Two... I was a little distracted, to be fair. Well, let's get this new land settled. So when you settle a town, you get to set your starting supplies based on how much you're willing to pay. 
I think uh, given that I'm doing this in summer, a modest start should be fun. Small amount of food, small amount of firewood to get you started. A uh, few, what am I call it? It's timber. Very small start. more trees than I be actually here that are here. Dense tree line. But similar to the start of the game, uh, the goal is going to be to set up the timber, set up basic food, basic heating, Get some buildings, get a church. One small little house to get my chickens laying eggs a little earlier. And another ox. That's going to be treasury money. I'm also going to start the tithing. Percentage of surplus food is given to the church in return for influence, so that's a way to generate influence, which will get me hopefully just a little bit in order to get these extra lands faster. So not only are you expanding tall, but you're also expanding wide. logistics get more and more complex that I mentioned that I'm a fan of logistics. It takes a pretty big brain. Alright, so get it in the treasury so I can support more expansions. my baker doing? Bakery. Okay, we're baking bread. Very good. Okay, to next level the church, I'm also going to need this uh, clay thing. Furnace. Some of these upper end resources aren't used quite as much yet, uh, which may indicate that this is early access, may indicate that there uh, is use for them for later attacks later on. Perhaps. Still only have one storehouse in the city, which has actually been pretty surprising. Two storehouses. That's kind of surprising to me that I'm 
uh, still keeping the resources low and manageable. Pat myself on the back. Uh, the iron ore, there wasn't a lot in this city, but he's been steadily mining it. Let me transform that resource into iron slabs. Get a armor builder. A blacksmith and like a joiner, I believe it's called. I haven't figured out a way to fix these yet. I don't think there is, but maybe in the future. Bandit check. Looks like we're good. Beautiful. So similar to the very start here, I'm going to want to get a church and some housing, the food, the uh, heating.
think I'm ready for the third region, so I'm uh, just trying to get my influence up. Okay, Waldebrand is growing. Valley Town. I'm trying to get to Burgage Plot Level 3. I need to transform that clay into clay tiles for the fancier housing. of harvesting all this stuff. Time to show these bandits some arrows. Church materials up. that little double house reminded me that in the main area I had some things that could be double houses. Expand the
and living space. Double the maximum family count for this burgage plot. I have a suspicion that it would probably be optimal to build these plots, which have enough room such that you can expand their size. Find half of the iron ore. We have flour, but no grain. This iron deposit is nearly mined out. Something that I planned on doing was get a blacksmith's workshop and a joiner. There's not going to be that many things I'm going to be able to build with this iron, but just enough to fill out my main spear militia would be the goal. Uh, got beat by my opponent these bandits. Spear militia are pretty tired from running this far, so let's see if the archers can carry on. I'll set these guys to stand your ground. Guard those archers. Oh, perfect. Do I want to try to set up a settlement in September? I've got September, October, November. If I go super fast, I suppose that could work. Do I want to aggressively hem this guy in? Or, well, let's see. This place has the wild animals and the berry deposit. That's like the easy mode settlement, uh, just because there's all this free food. I think I'll set it up over here, and we can set it up really non-ambitiously, perhaps. Oh, it'll also take a little bit of time to clean. Maybe by then it'll be too close to winter to think about setting it up. But also, perhaps I'm daring. Maybe I'll try to set it up during, during the storm. Right, in the meantime, I got my barley, the flax is producing. I believe I'm going to want, yes, treasury. Ah, darn, didn't get up to 500. If I did, I could set up a settlement with more resources.
Okay, so I want the flax to produce linen. And I want to use the barley to produce some malt. Where are all my unassigned workers here? And just put a few guys into that furnace. What was it that I needed that clay for? It was for something. This blacksmith. We were building spears and large shields. If I didn't build too much of the other stuff. In the meantime, old Brand's got the church up. Brand does have that um, high trapping area, so I'll focus on the trapping pulp extraction advanced skinning chain here. And this basically gives benefits to Hunter Hut. looking to upgrade the church, which I have the clay slabs for now. And then I'll need more clay to upgrade, too. Barrage Plots 3. Borgage? Borgage. Okay, October. Do I want to settle in here? In October. No, I'll wait. Winter is scary still. Let's see how uh, long it took this to get off the ground. It's not even off the ground after a year. Badly need more people. Now let's see how this place is looking for next year. So flax is being planted here. Let's change it to wheat. I think I want a third field, similar to what I had set up here.
Uh, barley. So one of each. So looking at the harvest, I've got rain, not that much of it, and green. Is that really all? Ten green. All right, well, ten green, flower, hides. that baker? I want to take a look at it. Fresh meat. Get your fresh meat here. Bread. Go find a cafe in all the land. Warm the oven. Hmm. You'll not find a bird of it anywhere else. Well, anyways. We've got some flour to still bake in the bread. The malt is getting up there. goes off of the flax which I have. I've got wheat. Oh, I've got wheat. Right, that's not flour. I need more guys. Maybe we're good enough on play roof tiles for now. Oh, and this, uh... Iron ore. I still have... Uh, we can stop building that for now. Have enough iron ore. Have enough iron slab, rather. Brond. People are starting to move in. I got my first die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six families, eight available. So what was my plan in this area? Checking the fertility of this place. It's actually not bad for a town. This looks like a generalist city. And it's right in the middle. Generalist with a focus on the wild animals here. So the wild animals is uh, the thing that makes this particular town special. That'll be strong at food production. It'll be strong at clothing. And that is just enough to get a lot of buildings to tier two of the residences. I'm making sure my storage isn't out of control yet. It surprisingly isn't yet. 
very easy for it to get out of control. Making the molt. Making the new clothing. Got the church up. So it's time to start planning for tier three. To get the tier three, I'm gonna need to turn that linen into clothes. And we'll also need to start serving the beer in our favorite tavern. from freezing cold. Oh dear. Wait, did I never get a... Wait, hold on. Surely I... Really this entire time? Holy cow, I didn't build... A woodcutter's woodcutter's lodge here the whole time. I'm so so sorry, my citizenry. They didn't complain or anything. So I don't want to build it near the berries because uh, that's an important source. I don't want to cut down the. Uh, little animals habitat either. Just over here. It's close enough. Well, let's uh... We'll get you a sense of what happens when you start a settlement in the winter. You can do it, guys. You can survive. Uh, so what do we have? We have four guys here left? Okay, looks like that wasn't too bad. Some people died, but I guess they were replaced pretty fast. It wasn't whole families that died, it was just members of the family.
Okay, saved. This town is not dead. Building shoes, right? No, we're building Taylor's workshop. And we're building brewery extension. And then in this year, I expect to be able to get my burgage plots to the three. Oh, you bandit. Oh my god! Archers and melee! Well, that's not great, but we have a ton of them. He's got the role playing as archers, I see. But all right, let's set up our settlement over here. I'll do the slightly better starting of supplies. Uh, with the better start, I'll be able to expand this uh, city quite a lot faster than the last one. This town, rather. It's also got more regional wealth, which means I can set up a can set up a little bit better of a start.
So whereas before I can only set up one single house, I can right away settle, set up six houses, which is the magical six for population growth. Something's being blocked right now. I think it's that little bit of road jutting out. Oh no, it's this log. So this particular thing I'm probably going to set up pretty quick and easy. Uh, I think I've got a pretty fierce opening against this AI. They didn't expect the expert to him. So I think I'm going to start claiming their lands next. And we'll just use this as a food uh, camp. So where was I? Set up a marketplace. So the plans here are simply going to be harvest the berries, harvest the wild animals, build a basic village, and then uh, probably mostly trade these resources away to the to maybe this area, which has less food. Since this area should have a ton of food. It's a farmville over here. Come. Had a clothing place, tailor shop, linen to yarn and dyes, linen and dyes. So I'm building a gambesons here. This makes linen. Clothes, cloaks, and shoes. Oh no, Gambesons is no good. I'm gonna need dyes, apparently. How do I make dyes? Not sure if dyes are in yet. Uh, that means the gambesons I'm making aren't actually useful. 
Oh, those are apparently armor. Look at my silly middle age knowledge. Medieval knowledge. Are those armor? Hmm. What is a campesin? It's it's an armament, so all right. So I need linen and dyes. I'm not entirely sure how to get dyes. What? We can always set up. Oh, there it is. Dyer's workshop converts berries into dyes. Uh, all right. I set that up, I set the tavern up, and we'll have both of these accomplished, and then we can upgrade these to level 3, assuming I have the roof tiles, which I do. Let's not forget that firewood this time around. Okay, with these supply chains up, I'll be building cloak, and I'll be building... Uh, never got around to building a gambeson, it looks like, so I managed to get this caught in time. It looks like it didn't have very much linen. Why is that? Flax to produce linen. I thought I had a good amount of flax. Hmm. I guess... Poof! It got eaten somewhere.
Okay, we are just missing the clothing aspect now, though. Here we're actually above 50% already. Right, and I can use my money early on some chickens. Plus ox. Plus one more chicken. I can haul is gonna be a uh, roaring on past. Voldebrand soon. Soon enough. Surgeon's doing well. I think we can upgrade a few of these to tier two. Yep. I'm in Valley Town, I've got some dyes, but I don't have linen. Until this uh, harvest of flax, then I guess. Step right up and sem. I want to figure out how well this baker is doing. I have no bread, and I have 50 flour. Get to work, bakery. Maybe I should get a second bakery for good measure.
a lot of eggs here, which means those uh, chickens are doing their job. So I could use more veggies. And it looks like this apple orchard is doing something. Although I can't quite tell whether or not having multiples is good. Oh, actually, I can see the apples. They're delicious. form housing. I'm gonna mix of trees and veggies here. In the meantime, Boldbrand is a medium village. At last. Doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters. The hunting specialty area. This place will be producing a lot of meat. It's got the berries. Got a berry deposit, nothing special. Yeah, so this is supposed to be a generalist area. It is a generalist. Uh, starting to contribute a bit. It's growing the regional wealth by having some advanced buildings. So I guess the question is how can this region contribute to the greater good of the Empire? Does have rich clay deposits, so I guess we'll focus it around the clay. Because my main will eventually run out of clay. But a few steps before getting there. Here, we've exhausted our iron a little while ago. And the clay is almost exhausted. And there will be a need for a lot of clay. Flax. This flax is the thing holding me back. Running out of fuel. Built this woodcutter's lodge, but I didn't man it. Good thing it actually reminded me before uh, winter this time. Uh, so this place is growing. I think I'm aiming to make this a very bare bones, just have the cool berries and the cool wild animals place. But I also would like to uh, actually advance these a little bit, which means I want to get at least to large village, I believe it is.
so we do still have to get some basics here. But just the basics. And we'll be a nice side territory to help feed Voldebran. So cool, you're so close, Flex. The last time I uh, was trying this, I didn't go down the Flax chain, I went down the sheep chain, so I wasn't familiar with how cloaks were built. So, in terms of clothing, I built the, um, the boots, which require sheep. Which is a little bit of an easier supply chain, I think. But this has so much crop fertility that it would feel wrong for me not to farm some flax. No need to rally everyone. I'm not entirely sure how damaging it is to rally people towards their job still. Um, oh, I guess it actually does take them away from their job. So it is uh, more useful than I thought to disband them. Well, double archer. Get in there. Quite a strong flax harvest coming up.
Look at these silly opponents trying to clear off these bandits, but those are my bandits. I'll try sending resources to nearest town. Well, looks like the resources did get sent over here to Eichenhau, which could be very helpful. This place that is producing a lot of food, let's make it produce even more food. Basic clothes in the church there, then I can get the tier two over here. Got a bunch that can go to tier two. And we have finally harvested that flax. my weaver supply chain going here. Alright, I see the flax. We're getting there. It's because they're soldiers. <laughs> Get back here. Hold the brand. 
hunters also inflict hides, so we've got that triple hunter upgrade. Eat unassigned, and uh, start getting them to work in the mine. Or in this clay deposit, rather. Since I'll run out of clay in the main. Man, it's happening. We are finally making linen. And then combined with the dyes, we'll make the clothes. I actually don't have that many dyes. look like at this point I am mostly constrained on my influence here. At 2,000 influence I can press a claim towards the opponent. Uh, tithes will give food to the church. How about a nice 20% tithe? And then I'll get influence for it. So, uh, Taylor here. Cavern is also going on and off a little bit. I think I'll finally get myself a trading post though to fill in these gaps.
place is pretty much already perfect. Not much more that I need to do here. Making a bunch of food. I can start shipping it out soon. Uh, maybe I will just get the third set of clothing up, just for redundancy's sake. But also, it would have been faster because if I had gotten the third method of clothing, it probably would be up by now. Although I don't have that much cash. The third methodology is boots, where I use the wool from the cloth Oh, but what's this? Okay, why can't I upgrade? I have everything fulfilled Oh my goodness, we don't have planks. hungry on planks than usual because of all this uh, wooden stuff I'm crafting. Well, this is actually a good place to set up. The pack station. Well, actually, actually. Well, let me clear out that bandit camp. Send just the spears this time. But what was I going to say?
I'm gonna trade for sheep. Import the sheep. I have a uh, hundred and twenty, so I can get four of them. And the sheep farm. And get the wool. The wool is used in the weaver workshop. Is actually a raider attack. Looks like in this general area. Got a bunch of troops chilling at home still. And Burgedge Plot. Level 3 finally. Oh, I don't actually have a lot of money. Well, that is what the trading post here is for, I guess. What do I have too much of, which is not food, because I need to tie that food stuff. Not actually a lot that I want to sell yet. Gotta hoard all that stuff. I don't need that many, uh, Burgage plots. Three is enough. Oh, those sneaky guys, they're attacking my undefended area there. Those pesky bandits! Pick up the pace. Time. Looks like uh, the opponent finally got one of the bandits. So I won't be getting that influence. But I will be getting a good amount of influence for beating these guys back. But these guys might set my town on fire. They don't have the little torch thing on, so it doesn't look like they're actually setting things on fire. That's kind of good. I don't need more treasury money, but I also don't need more resources now. Treasury money. No, these are the higher mercenaries, I guess. Advance. What I need is more influence. The good thing there's walking influence sticks right here. <laughs> Maybe I can create a little firing line.
Oh, man. Wouldn't that be cool? A little archer ambush from the woods of these banditos come out. It's not very sneaky, but whatever, it's a lot of archers. Time, time for melee archers. Alright, oh, that was, uh, three sets of bandits, which gave me a lot of influence. I think enough influence to take my first move. 2,000 influence to claim an area. In the meantime, I got this up to a small town. Just a small town. Okay, so since this place wants to make so many dyes, we should import the berries from there. Now the question is, what does this area want from here? What is this place even specialized in making? It's a big farm area. I should just uh, pawn off the useless things. Seeing that amount of flour reminds me we need to get my bakery extension up. And how is my other baker doing? Should be making so much bread, right? Get that bread. Ah, oh, where was I? What do I send over that way? So a pack station. I don't actually have enough money for a meal yet. But it sends... Stuff. I was going to Eichenhall. I'm going to receive Barry. And send TBD. Roofed. No. Actually, don't have that many roof tiles either.
what do I trade over there in order to get their berries? Uh, because you do have to trade. Hmm. Man, all this stuff is good. I guess there's no way I ever use all this leather. So each leather I send, I'll get two berries. Since that leather is presumably priced as double. Uh, I do need to get a mule to actually make it an efficient travel, because that is a ways away. We're gonna be making a massive journey across two of... Side of map to side of map. <laughs> Using this great trade route. Almost corner to corner, not quite. My army's gonna rust up a little bit, and then I'm going to lay a claim over here. What do you think you're doing over there? I can have made it to large village. I can take the double berries, which is really good on the rich deposit berries. Valley town. Use a fallow field of the pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. Good combination, I guess. Don't have enough regional wealth to get everything I want in place here, but what I wanted first was a mule. Get this trade set up. These guys are rusted up. hereby do claim sell bits in my name. The gauntlet has been thrown. Oh, hello. Alright. I thought it was possible they might get more guys. But we can always hire Merce. 
So. Hmm. Wow, that would be a huge waste of 2,000 influence, wouldn't it be? I didn't know they would have this many guys. That's actually a stronger force than me because they've got 36 in retinue there. I can get 10 extra in my retinue. 7 extra. I was expecting there to be a... Uh, I was expecting to be able to hire some mercenaries, but maybe I had to hire the mercenaries first, then declare war. Right, these guys cost 50 apiece, and they are quite strong, apparently. That's one of the uses for treasury money. I mean, I guess I might as well throw all the money at it. Both challengers must bring their armies to the battlefield. When the time runs out and there is no challengee's troops present on the battlefield, the lord who initiated the challenge wins. Status losing. Oh, the battlefield location is there. So this does seem like a terrible idea, since we're outnumbered and outqualitied. But I can't help but be curious, right? I wonder if I can even whittle them down. Perhaps. Set up a nice defensive formation. Good luck. Watch a good show in which I have the uh, disadvantage, but we'll see how it goes. I didn't know they wouldn't just start shooting automatically. I do believe the spearmen are stronger than the uh, infantry. 
That's good. What's scary is this 36 retinue. Okay, my archers have taken out their archer core. going as badly as I thought it would. to lose my retinue there. Oh, retreat. Okay, good idea. I agree. Fight the opponents? Oh god, they're running straight for me. Okay, well, this lets me see what it's like to rebuild an army. Costly was that? How will these guys rebuild? I think I was stretched against my population limit anyways. How are these guys gonna come at me? Any mercenaries? Don't run at him. Keep fleeing. another spear crowd.
Okay, I might be able to get him with the second line. Peasant infantry there, that's no problem. It's all about whether or not I can take out these elite guys. Looks like I outnumber them by a lot now. The glorious battle for Selvit, in which a overconfident Meraveliatam pushed in, but drew them in to the value center. I wonder if these archers are actually helping. Do archers just cheer if there's no one in? I mean, if friendly fire wouldn't happen. Okay, that's four armies against one, and my armies aren't really that great here. That is a mega elite army. Get out there, a bunch of fresh recruits.
Holy cow, we've done it. Oh, friendly fire mode. That's what I needed to put on. I wonder if that's why I didn't see any mercenaries. The enemy hired them. Just had them kind of chill in here. Also, I wonder how hard it will be to tackle that final area. But it looks like I need to lick my wounds after that one. City number two can chime in a little bit and be like, hey, we can fight too. Maybe I can even use Eichenhaal to contribute some troops. Thirty-three bodies need burial. All right. Okay. Well, let's see how fast these guys come back. Unburied bodies. Population growth. What's a few bodies here and there? 86?
Okay, all right. We buried them. Very good. Now we hope that this population grows. It's taken up there. Maybe I'll take it easy on taxes for some time. Guess it is pretty tough to get this area's food out completely. So I guess I might as well build a small troop out of here. like I just uh, tried to deliver stuff over here, but my inventory is too full. You did it! He survived. We gotta take care of these pesky brigands. Peaceful little sheep farm. 
and produces another source for Weaver Workshop. thing said that I had won, but I think I have to take care of this last spot to win. I don't know how strong his second force is gonna be. But hopefully by the time I get the 2000 influence I'll have... I think I have just as strong a force already. But I think I need a little bit stronger. Unless, the stuff that I defeated actually stays dead. Tough to it. It's not hard per se to manage all the towns, but it would require a little bit more attention than what I'm giving them. I went for the fast W. For the purpose of making a video that didn't last that long. Alright, we can uh, have this middle city contribute a small spear army. This city over here is this having a nice paradise.
Hmm. I suppose similarly. Classic blacksmith and joiner. to funnel a bunch of food over here so I can tie it away for influence. How about 50% time? Oh, give me some taxes too. By the way, as a note, it is possible to build a manor in all the regions, and you can tax them all as well. Um, however, currently, when you build the manor in the other places, it gets you another retinue uh, slot, which I can't afford. Uh, the can't afford refers to there's a limit of six army positions right now. Should be much higher. But I think uh, just for whatever reason, it's capped at six at the moment. collected my stuff there. Which I wonder what will happen if I build my Thix army here and then I build the manor. I guess I can try that out. So we will raise a Waldebrand fear militia. And then we will try constructing a manor here. So that I can be a manor lord, manor lord. I said the name.
see. It's going for flax, wheat, barley. Okay. Do you not have very much ale? That's because I don't have very much malt. And how's the bread situation looking? Looks like we need more bakery extension. Produces bread from flour. Twice the efficiency of the communal oven. You have a lot of flour. So I think I could theoretically produce a ton of bread. I mean, hopefully, I can tithe it for influence. Oh, some of these apple trees have finally come in as nice, strong apple trees. Let's see, how do I do that thing with the pastures? Allows to use a fallow field as a pasture. Oh, fence up. Cool. Fence up. sheep. Well, yes, I'm basically just waiting until 2k influence here. Not just waiting, we're actively getting a ton of food. And contributing it to the cause.
I could settle this area, but close enough to him that that won't matter. Aldebrand. You made me proud. You actually managed to muster enough for a spear militia. Oh, man. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. It looks like the retinue from it will allow it to go past the or seven. No mercenaries out there. That implies I could build one here as well. This place is shipping food over to the main. I'm just gathering useless leather here. Nice little fifty percent tithe here as well. Oh, I think a hundred percent tithe up here might lead me along. I guess that's a way a food place could contribute, just granting massive amounts of influence. 
instead of shipping the food back. Okay. UK rounded. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually like slightly under 2k and I rounded to 2k. the opponent, muster. An equivalent force as the first time. The gauntlet has been thrown. Oh! Wait a second! I didn't expect there to be even more. Well then. Stay. 
I got three contingents of archers. Oh my god, they're still catching my breath. But I wonder if the enemy is unable to see me through all this tree cover. Hopefully there's at least some chaos going on. Okay, well, the archer fight went well. My guys look like they are recovering. Or as uh, the enemy appears to be dancing around. And losing all their energy. I do believe we're still behind here. Oh, my archers are all dead. The only way we're gonna be able to do anything is if uh, the two groups somehow separate, I think. That seems like it is a gigantic army, and I'm currently limited by only having six slots. As you can see, I don't can't actually make another group. No mercenaries out there, so it seems like the only way currently to take them out. I think I could do it, but it would involve expanding the retinue. And then going in with a bunch of elite troops, basically.
I guess it can be done, but I'm going to need a lot of money. in the way here. So hiring 14 more guys here will cost uh, 700-ish bucks. By the time I get to 2,000 influence, I'll have more than 700-ish bucks. So, in Valley Town, we can finally upgrade the manor. Increases maximum retinue size by 12. Limit 1.
I'm not a hoarder. It's just... Let's see, what is it just? What am I gonna do with all this clay, right? This is useful for the part of the game that isn't out yet, presumably. Play is mostly used in order to upgrade to level 3, but I don't believe I'll need to be working towards level 3 here. simply wish to tithe 90% of my food so that we can get the influence faster. Very expensive set of retainers there. But I guess we're in the end game. No use for money other than push the final attack. Looks like I might even be able to get more troops than I expected. Nice extra 300 influence. Oh. 
some raiders. We can take them out for glory. Not the burny little thing. These guys are here to burn. Though maybe they won't when they see that I've got guys coming straight at. But we are kind of far away. Surely you wouldn't burn my town. My army's right here. I wonder if they'll bump into this army. Actually, it looks like this army might be helping me. No one likes brigands. Unfortunately, well fortunately and unfortunately, I don't really want them to help, but I want this influence. I also kind of want to see my town on fire, but... Oh, well, it's the best of both worlds. Computer units had to retreat or something. Mercenary companies available. Oh, maybe the mercenaries weren't available earlier because of this uh, mercenary just getting stuck there. Okay, well, mercenaries. Yes. The Wayward Sons. See if I can't, um... Did have enough money to get more retainers here, but 
Unfortunately, I chose the manor that's in the middle of being upgraded. Oh, boy. Oh, wait. Through here. Alright, well, that is a very large army. Let's hope it's enough. It's certainly possible to have more, but not realistic. When you can only have six slots. I'm, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got, like, my extra two slots by building the main ores a little bit slower. Got my mercenaries. Let's do this. About the same as last time. A new message. I can make it worthwhile if you drop all your claims. Uh, 1312S, I believe that means Hilda Vault is planning to pay me. 1,312. Dear Hildebolt, Non-negotiable. Just have all these guys stand your ground. These militia archers can tank. Mercenary archers, I mean. Let's stand the ground thing. Defense is doubled, attack frequency is halved. What a melee. I'll have these all be balanced, I suppose.
I think that melee is going well for me. One would hope so. Alright, in the meantime, it looks like a few of the opponent's units aren't quite in battle. Friendly fire mode. Instead of shooting a volley, so will just fire aiming directly at the enemy. Shoot at will! Friendly fire! Still got a 35 retainer. Okay, close fight here. This fight's going slightly my way. This fight looks like it is not going well, unfortunately. Those retainers are strong. Didn't I have a full stack of 24 retainer? Arrows, they do nothing. That archer in particular. You can die. I wonder if there's any uh, more mercenaries out there in the world. No, reinforcements. 
Or guys who are rallying from running, I guess. Let me possibly collect a few more guys. Is this a thing? Guess it's not a thing to reinforce them. Definitely taken out a few guys. But. I believe my army is weaker. What are these cowardly wayward sons doing? these guys down. I get the feeling if I let them go, they're just gonna once again show up with full force. Archer. effectiveness guys left from all this fatigue. Perhaps with shooting all these guys in the back of this group of archers. We'll whittle them down. Group of 31. I don't know how I'm going to do anything against that. But we've got to. Just 
Shock and awe this 15 star guy. God. My poor archer. Okay. Looks like I broke the 15 though. That's really good. chaos in here. It's pure chaos. Goodness. All right. Come on. You guys can do it. They're exhausted. They're exhausted. They're surrounded. Surely I can spook them. Another logistics city builder conquered by Trump. 